Today on Country Squire Radio, it's a Squire Select, baby! Ow! Yeah! Plus, we say goodbye to a dear friend. Me! Also, <laughs> but I mean, not forever. Not forever. Just in... in not just from Jackson. Geographically speaking. Yeah, no, ge- yeah. geographically, <laughs> right. Not, But not existentially or, you know... Metaphysically. Uh, metaphysically or... Emotionally, yeah, yeah or anim- animally, spiritually, or mineral- minerally, minerally, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's none of that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, wonderful Squire Select uh, to pair up some fine premium uh, quality drinks with some fine premium quality uh, pipe tobacco. Also, we've got a pipe question about uh, where you smoke your pipe, or perhaps more accurately, where we wish we could smoke our pipe. That with listener feedback, questions of the quick fire, and more happening right now on Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo, and I'm John David. JD, hey Bo, good afternoon, man. <laughs> well, I'm doing really well. I don't know if you do, people... man. You, you, we've already had our first uh, error. It's first about and we haven't even drunken, drink, drink, drinking, drunken yet. Yeah, the alcohol has not been touched <laughs> by by the the lips of us. So, no, yeah. that's great, man. <laughs> uh, d- do we need to go again from the top? No, I, I. You know what? It's a Squire Select, and uh, it just starts it off right. I just, I feel like it does start it off. No, right. that's great. That's uh, but great. of course, welcome. You know, uh, this is uh, this is Country Squire Radio. This podcast that we do, I, I, I do. You know, whatever we do, have kind of a bit of a. Uh, you know, a Squire selector, or uh, it's always good to let the folks know we'll we'll be enjoying a little bit of the the beverage, a little bit of the adult beverage. Yeah, even if it is, uh, you know, twelve fifteen p.m. Uh, on the day after daylight savings time or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it's <laughs> man, it's technically like earlier than early, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, one way or the other. So uh, you know, while we do put forth a very professional podcast, uh, this particular podcast will be. Even more professional because of the spirits involved. <laughs> Man, how you doing? How's things going at the shop? Things are at the shop are okay, but I'm going to be a dad. Dude, okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, and there it is. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, just let, let's let's leave this off thing, uh, this this thing off right, man. I'm a, I'm gonna be a papa. Okay, so this is great, man. I was uh, actually this morning at breakfast <laughs> having uh, having breakfast with my dad and my daughters, and somebody came oh, up cool. to me. And said, uh, oh, so John David's going to be a father. And I was like, oh, I was like, I didn't know he was ready to tell people. And he said that you uh, you posted it on Facebook. Yeah, man. It, the, the cat's out of the bag. Uh, yeah, we, uh, man, we're, we're expecting and, uh, man, really fired up. It's funny, too, because, you know, we're uh, going to have our first anniversary here in just a couple of weeks, uh, which is, um, is, is great. But, um, yeah, you know, he, one more thing to just pile on top, baby. Yeah, uh, all the uh, incredible changes and, and everything were just uh, – we're thrilled, man. Mama's mama's healthy, uh, expecting in September, and um, should be fun. That's good, man. Yeah, little Brian Levine Cole. Can't oh yeah, to, uh, <laughs> child of the to... covenant. <laughs> yes, indeed. Can't, can't wait to meet him or, or her. Or, actually, or her. We don't know yet. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Well, it's, uh, uh, we're we're thrilled, man. We're uh, yeah, really excited. Uh, Mama's been feeling really good. She hadn't had uh, uh, you know, really any sickness or anything. Really tired. She's very very tired, but. Um, yeah, other than that, it's, uh, it's been, been good, man. So been, uh, I don't know, my, my, <laughs> my contem- contemplative pipe smoking recently has been much more, um, you know, kind of like excited, but also brooding, like, pu- you know, <laughs> planning, like, man, how am I going to afford this? Or what are we going to do with this? Or how are we going to rearrange this? Or gosh, I, we've got so many things to give away and sell and figure out and, you know, buy and, ah, <laughs> You'll get there. It's probably a good day for for uh, for for a Squire Select. But, I, I'm telling, um, man. No, we're we're really thrilled and um incredibly incredibly thankful. So, well, uh, yeah. I will say, of course, we are uh, broadcasting this episode live this week, and uh, you get the uh, the congratulations are raining in. So uh, <laughs> so yeah, man. Everybody's Thanks, friends. I, I appreciate it. We're we're really thrilled. It's amazing because, like, you know, I feel like over the course of uh, this this podcast, and especially in like recent years, like we we've we've seen the evolution of John David Cole. You were just a, a a humble store manager, yeah. bachelor. No, that's uh, right. When the show began, and now you're yeah. you're married, got a kid on the way, you own yeah. a shop. You're a respectable individual. Well, I, I I wouldn't go that far. Well, it depends on how far you look underneath the hood, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on the surface, uh, you know, maybe there's a patina of respect and uh, you know uh, all all that stuff. But uh, yeah, anyway, we're 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 excited, man. That's awesome. I'm, I'm glad y'all have had been able to walk with me. We'll uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm, I've got to figure out, you know, I've got to mark. First baby Cole was some, you know, some particular uh, thing. So I don't know if it's going to be like a new 
a new pipe or a tobacco that Dude, I, you got to do a blend, a, a, a tobacco I aged for, you know, the, you know, my, my child's first, you know, 18 years or something. I, I don't know. I got to figure out something that's, that could be a lot of fun for that. So, um, anyway, would love, uh, would love some ideas really. I think it could be, uh, I think it'd be fun. I'm going to circle back to that idea. Cause it's going to play into one of the things we're talking about this, this week. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think a tobacco would be really cool, man. Uh, you know, as your family is growing, so is the international country squire radio pipe club. Yeah. Yes, family. yes, indeed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, joining us at the P Pilgrim level, Wyatt Mills. And I am sorry, Wyatt, I can't mispronounce your name. It's that it's that simple. Yeah. And, I mean, I could have gone like Wyatt, Wyatta or no, that, that, that just don't even try. Yeah, there's really no we, we're, we're already <laughs> sound ignorant as it is. <laughs> <laughs> just let it ride. Let it ride. But uh, I mean, welcome, yeah. Wyatt. And thank you so much for uh, jo joining us and supporting the show at patreon.com slash country squire radio uh, at the Pilgrim level. And of course, you too can join the club as well. Get some light, a lot of great things. For example, the backlog of over, uh, it's now, I guess, technically over 100 episodes because we've got some extra stuff in there now. Yeah. Uh, so yep. check that out again, patreon.com slash country square radio. That is why this show is able to happen and why we are able to sit down this week and drink <laughs> and recommend <laughs> stuff for you to drink and eat no, that's or, right. or partake in. Uh, as of course, this is a Squire Select episode. Um, so man, Squire Select. Uh, do do you want to? Well, we'll 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 hold that off on that. Until okay, great. Thing. Okay. Great. Mike, cut out that little uh little exchange. Sorry, I messed it up. No, it's all good. No, that's all good. Um, all right. So, of course, this is a Squire Select episode, and uh, Squire Select for those who have never tuned in before is where we typically pair. Uh, generally adult beverages, generally of kind of the brown water type of... Yeah, we kind of tend to have our favorites, yeah. you know? We, we go for, um, you know, one genre over the other, maybe. Exactly. And so we, we pair up uh, some some form of whiskey, bourbon, scotch, uh, we, but we've also done gin, we've done tea, we flirted with the idea of coffee, I believe there was one beer, but, but <laughs> basically taking uh, various uh, beverages yeah. and pairing them specifically with uh, pipe tobacco. And uh, today, man, of course, this is uh, my last episode here that we're, we're recording, that we're doing live in Jackson. Here in Jackson. At least right. for, for, for quite a while anyway. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, as kind of a, a going away present to myself, I wanted to make sure that we did uh, two of my favorite <laughs> <laughs> favorite in fact i would even go so far as to say that at this point in my life this we we will be looking at my favorite scotch like my top tier scotch and my favorite bourbon like my top tier bourbon that's a big deal yeah and so i'm i'm super excited about it i love to what 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 we have sitting in front of us uh represents probably about 150 dollars worth of alcohol well so <laughs> there's also like especially one more so than the other but really both of them are kind of special yeah. occasion bottles sure. uh especially with everything that's going on with you know, um, you know, buying a house, selling a house. I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, I, I sold the studio. Yeah. Uh, and no, so right. we yep. announced that today on the, or on Pottery site. So, uh, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, big, big moving and shaking uh, uh, from a kind of a business and family standpoint. And so, you know, I, I like to also mark the occasion with the, uh, with, with, with the good stuff from time to time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I've been saving up uh, uh, one of these in particular for quite some time, but anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> what let, shall we do the bourbon first? I think we shall. I yes, think we shall, man. It, it, this is great. So we, um, a, a couple of, couple of good ones here today. Uh, we're leading off with old soul bourbon Yes, sir. Um, here. And, and this is a interesting, if you know, you're probably, if you're not from, uh, our local area not familiar with this, although later in uh, 2019, if you do live in the greater southeast, you may uh, have the opportunity to buy this where you are at. But um, this is Old Soul Bourbon. Um, it's a uh, very limited edition uh, new whiskey from Cathead Distillery here in Jackson, Mississippi. So um, Cathead it, it is interesting distillery. It's here uh, on South Ferris Street right by the convention center uh, in downtown Jackson. And it um, it's the oldest uh, distillery in Mississippi. It opened in 2010. <laughs> That's right. So really, really old, uh, you know, vintage, venerated uh, uh, outfit. That Listen, they, man. No, they, they've we, done it. We got to do what we can. No, with that's what we got it. Here. That's it. Well, the, the, you know, all the dis there's been plenty of distilling that's gone on for centuries mm -hmm. in our beautiful state, but it's all been, uh, you know, by, uh, you know, people in the woods in their bathtub. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but, man, Cathead has just done a great job. They, um, it kind of cut their teeth on vodka, right? So they did, you know, vodka and uh, a few different gin products, a barrel aged gin, and uh, and it, it really interestingly enough, a chicory liquor that I think we've even talked about. Yeah, some, uh, hoodoo. Um, yeah, hood, the hoodoo liquor, um, and uh, their honeysuckle vodka, particularly good. We have kind of a local rendition of a Moscow Mule called a 
uh, Mississippi Mule, obviously, and uh, it's uh, made with the honeysuckle vodka. Really, really good. Very so, sweet. Um, yeah, real, real sweet, but good summertime drink. Um, again, a newer distillery, but you know, from from early on, they kind of wanted to. Uh, they, they cut their teeth on vodka, but they were uh, interested in, you know, releasing a bourbon. And so uh, after several years of work um, and some collaboration with some other other distilleries, they came out uh, most very recently with uh, with Old Soul. Now, this was a, a very small release. Only 500 cases of Old Soul uh, was was released. Uh, but the great thing is, and it, this has been such a hit, 4000 more cases will be available later this year. Uh, and so later in, in 2019, as we're speaking, um, this will be a, a, you know, a, a little more widely available. So if you are in a state where you can ship, you know, stuff in, you may look for that later this year. Uh, if you're in the greater Southeast, you may, um, you know, have the opportunity to go to your favorite uh, package store and, uh, and pick a bottle up yourself. So, and you um, definitely should. I mean, you know, it is, um, yeah, uh, cat head in particular. I mean, really, they do some uh, really amazing stuff and, uh, you know, I, I, a couple, I guess it was about a week or so ago, my wife and I actually got a chance to tour their distillery. Yeah. Uh, as kind of a, you know, I was trying, I had a list of like things that I've never done in Jackson that I, I have no excuse for having never done. And that was one of them. And so we went back there and this is what kind of made me think of this as you were mentioning it earlier. What they do is whenever the owners have a, have a child, they put up a cask of something. I don't know if it's their <laughs> scotch, their bourbon or their vodka or whatever it is, but uh, a barrel of something. And they write the kid's name on it. So that yeah, when that, that kid hits a certain age and or gets married, they give it to they them crack, as a crack that open. Yeah. yeah, a wedding gift. That's great. So you know, I, you might want to age up some tobacco. Yeah, they, cool, I, man. I, I, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, you know, it got to be something there of you know maybe a blend or uh, you know something that we can um, you know create or maybe a maybe a pipe and tobacco you know combination that we just set back for their 18th birthday or something like that. I don't know. It could be it could be a lot of fun. So um but yeah anyway so the uh old soul whiskey uh here from from Cathead um will be much more readily available later this year. Um 21 percent rye, 75 percent corn and four percent malted barley. Um this is a high rye um mash bill um and it, it's really just a blend of two whiskeys. They you know kind of found a couple in their uh, arsenal that they were really proud of and blended those together and came up with uh, with what we have here. So um, from the distiller, uh, it, it says, quote, light in color with caramel vanilla, mm. toasted oak and pipe tobacco on the nose. Very appropriate. Uh, leathery spice uh, enters with a creamy sweetness leading into flavors of brown sugar, cherry, fruit and oak spice on the finish. And all that is flowery code language for it's pretty doggone good. Yeah, man. <laughs> Look, the, the great thing it's about uh, the great thing about Cathead is, you know, yes, they are um, they're new to the game because the laws have, have just made it available to be in the game. But because of what they're doing, they really are setting the tone for what the bourbon culture is in terms of the distillers. Like, what what is the taste of Mississippi? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you want me to go crazy with that? You no, I, I I do not. It, it it's really funny if you're watching today. Um, it, you know, instead of listening, you'll note that uh, Bo is drinking this. Uh, it, it, okay, <laughs> okay let, no, hang on. Let me just say it, it's <laughs> it's really good that Bo and I have had both of these uh, whiskeys already multiple times. So we're yes. very familiar with what these taste like. Um, we do feel obligated to drink it live on air because it, you know that it, this is a Squire Select. But we're at Bo's. Uh, uh, you know, studio, which he uh, is in, kind of in the process in of the moving process out. Of moving. I was about to say, it's like, right? it's, it's mine for another like 48 hours. Yeah. So yeah. It, this is kind of like the uh, equivalent of, <laughs> you know, you're, you're at your apartment sitting on milk crates. Well, Bo and I are, are you know, we just poured a, a, a little, uh, you know, finger of, um, you know, $45 uh, bourbon. Uh, he's got a dirty uh, bean fruit, uh, you know, coffee mug. Well loved. And, 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 and I've got mug. a, uh, looks like a, um, a, a coffee one of these little coffee cups he looks like he stole from a Hampton Inn. Hey, that's, that's, that's the last one of my Hampton Inn steals right there. All right. And uh, and so that's what we're about to do this out of. And and it's just, uh, it, it's it's very fitting. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That is good bourbon. Yeah, I'll be honest. I was really, um, I was highly impressed when they came out with Old mm. Soul. Like, I, I did not know. Um, I'm ashamed to say I, I, I didn't know what to think. I, you know, I was, I was a little skeptical and, and, and man, they, they nailed it. Me too. They, they crushed it. I yeah. mean, like, it's one of those things. I'm not a vodka guy, so I've never really paid, uh, cat had much, much attention for that reason. Yeah, like I've sure. had the, sure. the Mississippi mule and everything. And, you know, I was like, oh, it's like a Moscow mule, but sweeter. And, you know, which, which is fine. 
And so when, when they came up with the bourbon, like, you know, you know how here in Mississippi, and I could say this cause I'm still a Mississippian for two more days. Like, <laughs> you know how we treat ourselves and see ourselves, you know, yeah. like we were like, yeah, sure. yeah, like, okay, that's cool that you're doing that. But we all know, man, you're not gonna <laughs> <laughs> like, so when I saw it, I'm like, okay, yeah, they're doing the bourbon. Well, let's try it out. Yeah. Dude, this is, this is, I'm, I'm serious about this. Like this is my newfound favorite bourbon. And for the longest time, Buffalo Trace was like my top tier. Yeah. And I think it is because of those kind of vanilla, but also kind of a very strong caramel type of like undertone that, that goes into this that really makes it very sippable. And like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm someone who prefers to drink my bourbon straight. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll have a cocktail from time to time, but like when it comes down, just, just give it to me straight. You'd like up. something a little, yeah. It's very sippable, mm -hmm. and and review after review mentions that about this particular whiskey that it it doesn't sacrifice you know flavor uh, for drinkability, and so you just have a lot of uh, a lot of flavor packed into a very smooth, incredibly uh, you know accessible whiskey that um, is just a lot of fun to drink. There's just enough rye in there to add that uh, that spice, you know that um, that is associated with rye whiskey. Um, but it's got the the really uh, incredible smoothness of a you know of a corn based bourbon. And that's so, what I love to. All right, yeah, so I'm really, gonna gush really, really one good. more time about this because this <laughs> honestly, like, because Cathead is is setting the tone of what like like bourbon from Mississippi is. Like, we've had a couple of bourbons from Texas, and I got to tell you, while I'm always very appreciative to get the, the gifts and everything, and, and any oh, they're great, fun, yeah, they're very good. But like, but but this, I mean, is insanely good, and the fact that they chose to go rye heavy. You know what I mean? Like yeah. pushing, pushing the limit on rye. Cause you yeah. see other places that will, you know, push, uh, push other angles of the bourbon, uh, and push kind of corn to the background. They did not do that here. And they push the rice. So you get a nice little kind of uh, spice kick there at the end. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's this really, so good. it's really good. Yeah. And, and the vanilla and, uh, caramel, uh, you know, is it the those superlatives are really there? I mean, it, bringing you know, a case with this, with yeah, it, it's it's really tasty. So if you are down here sometime, uh, try to pick some up, or later this year if you get the chance to maybe ship some to where you're at. Um, you know, great great opportunity to do that today. Uh, we're pairing it. I've got a got a couple from our good friend uh, Greg Peace, who we know and love, and um, man, have just uh you know it, had a great relationship here for with for several years now, but um. Today, the Old Soul, we're pairing with Regent's Flake. Uh, Regent's Flake, a beautiful tin. This came out, I believe, uh, uh, three or four years ago, maybe, maybe four or five years ago. It's been on the market for uh, for just a little bit, but um, really, really beautiful tobacco. Of course, all the tin art from Greg Peace, just uh, really, um, you know, really attractive. On the back, it says, Regent's Flake, a generous measure of fine Izmir leaf, is layered on a sturdy foundation of matured red and sweet, bright Virginia tobaccos, mm. then pressed and allowed to mature and ferment in cakes before being sliced and tinned. This is one for the lover of oriental mixtures with their exotic and en enticing incense-like aroma and brilliant flavor. Rub a flake or two, fill a cherished pipe, and prepare for an exceptional mm. smoking experience. So um, real real handsome uh, kind of, uh, you know, purple and white uh, themed uh, uh, tin with just a real, um, you know, kind of attractive old-fashioned map there on the front. And so um, beautiful tobacco. I'm going to let Bo uh, crack that open. And I was about to say, has this been popped yet? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, smoke quite a bit out of out oh, of yeah. Now I've tins. I've noticed something. I think I, I I'd have to go back and double check, but I feel yeah. like that anytime that we're dealing with rye, typically Oriental tobaccos come up. Like that seems to be kind of a go to. I could see I could see why that might be. Um, you know, something I, I'll have to go back and look. Uh, you know, historically what we've done, but yeah, that you know that that Oriental leaf. Um, it has a fragrance to it. Uh, it there's a floral uh, note there and a perfuminess that I think is just really attractive, particularly when compared with, um, you know, the bourbon's kind of vanilla, uh, caramel undertones, uh, really overtones, if you think mm -hmm. about uh, kind of where this particular whiskey is coming from. And so, um, you know, th there is a perfuminess here that I think just kind of goes along and, and um, you know, accents really nicely the, um, the, the, the sweet smoothness of this particular uh, bourbon. So, um, yeah, I thought it was a good pairing and, um, man, you know, and who doesn't love a good flake tobacco golly, yeah. especially, um, you know, someone that's going to enjoy the subtleties of a nice, uh, aged whiskey that, um, you know, has a lot of complexity. And so, um, anyway, thought, thought that would be a good pairing. Really nice tin note to it. You know, you mentioned, of course, the tin in and of itself has that kind of, uh, you know, uh, kind of Royal purple, that kind of jumps out at you. Yeah, also, yeah. you've got a a map of London, or at least a portion of London, with King's Cross right there. Um, you know, and this is clearly a 
you know, this isn't Google Maps. This is this is like a, uh, <laughs> you know, back when uh, you had to like fold out the giant piece of paper to yep. figure out where you were, you yep. know, uh, this is this is kind of that that sort of thing. Well, I like, you know, this particular tobacco is so good because, um, you know, obviously Greg selects, you know, choice Virginia leaf. Oh, but, the man's a genius. You know, with with pairing it with the Izmir, um, that's a very high Izmir content in this particular um, tobacco. You know, he does have that uh, that kind of. Uh, semi-sweet, uh, floral, uh, mustiness. That there's just kind of an interesting perfuminess to this tobacco. Um, but then there's a, there's enough perique, I think, on the back end to kind of give it a, a nice spice as well, and so uh, kind of uh, augments that um, you know the rye content of this particular bourbon too. So um, anyway, I, I thought it was uh, thought it was pretty good. If you haven't tried Regent's Flake, I uh, highly recommend. Um, you know, at least at least put it in one of your rotations and uh, and see what you think. That's good, man. All right, uh, there you go. All right, so so next up, yeah. So this is a this is a whiskey, obviously that doesn't need um, it doesn't need an introduction. It needs no introduction. It, it just speaks needs for itself. it just needs uh, the respect that it's earned and uh, and veneration. <laughs> well, and 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 the iconic nature of it, ladies and gentlemen. We got some uh, Lagavulin. Uh, now you know it's one of those words that I've had to practice worth saying. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It, uh, you, you look at it and you're like, man, it's um, it's kind of goofy looking. But yeah, it's Lagavulin uh, 16. Um, this is a Isla Scotch uh, whiskey, single malt, and uh, of course, one of the most, uh, frankly, one of the most venerated whiskeys, um, you know, in the in the world. Now, I'm trying to remember because this is one back. This is this goes a long time, a long time ago on a podcast that was this one, but very different <laughs> from this one. Um, we had Malt Madness. Do you remember that? For no. Okay, this is wow. All right, this is taking us back to the first ever year of Country Squire Radio, and what we did was we stacked up a bunch of different kind of whiskeys and scotches and bourbons to kind of figure out what were the top three. Yeah, yeah. And if I'm remembering correctly, okay, that, this is coming back to me now. Yeah, yeah. We had we had the. the I top, probably didn't drive home that night. <laughs> <laughs> we did well. So that's the thing. When it was all said and done, because it was all like uh, chosen by the listeners. Oh, yeah. And no, that's right. The price point, because the, the goal was going to be that whatever the winners were, we were going to actually review for the next Squire Select. Okay. But the price point collectively was like so outside of our budget, <laughs> especially then. <laughs> like it just, it, it, it was not happening. But so we tried to trickle it in. But I remember it was uh, Belvini was one of them. I love Balvini. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Their, their cask series, I think we've done before on the show, which is uh, quite good. The Caribbean cask. Um, and then I can't remember what the third one was, but the, the big one, the champion of all. Lagavulin. The, this, this dude right here. Yep. yep. <laughs> King of the Isla Malts, uh, southernmost uh, island in the, um, in the inner Hebrides. If you're looking at a map of Scotland, uh, kind of imagine those, uh, those, you know, little flaky islands kind of sitting out there on the West coast. Um, you know, certainly more populated with uh, sheep than 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 man, uh, and has been for centuries, and uh, just a beautiful beautiful part of the world. But the southernmost island of those Inner Hebrides uh, is the little little island of Isla, and it is uh, it, it's got just such an interesting uh, flavor profile in all the dis distilleries that are there. So we've got eight distilleries that are active on um, on Isla, and um, they're all peaty, smoky, complex. These are um, we want to talk about, you know, biggest, boldest, most, um, you know, most, uh, again, superlative, you know, flavors <laughs> there that we're trying to uh, think of. And that is what these particular whiskeys just really major in. So uh, when people think of Isla whiskeys, they think of um, medicinal flavors, uh, iodine, salt, uh, seaweed, uh, just, you know, kind of these bold, uh, you know, very unapologetic flavors. And, um, and, and you know, of course, Lagavulin, uh, the 16, uh, really majors in, in, in all that. So um, this the distillery there was founded in 1816. That's the modern distillery. Of course, there is uh, uh, many, many decades before that, there's evidence of illegal distilling uh, on, on the exact same property, <laughs> uh, which we would not expect any other thing uh, from our Scottish friends. Or, or um, really anywhere where there's a distillery. But yeah, yeah, no, that's that's yeah, no, that's that's exactly right. I uh, mean, it's uh, uh, so good. You know, it, it, preparing for this and thinking about it, I just um, so many similarities between the people of uh, Bonnie Scotland and uh, and the American South and mm -hmm. Mississippi is really interesting. Of course, you think about all the heritage uh, carry over there and, um, you, you know, you think about um, it, it just the incredible um, I don't know. Commonalities with culture is kind of fascinating, but uh, man, Scotland there, 
course, uh, in this particular area since 1816, uh, there was a lot of, um, you know, kind of uh, political strife that went on between the Lagavulin distillery and a few others. And so they finally sorted some of that out. And um, again, Lagavulin, they, uh, you know, are arguably kind of the king in their own realm, uh, arguably the most intense, smoky and rich whiskey um, and it, this is, of course, aged uh, 16 years in oak casks. And so um, it's really just a, an incredible, an incredible whiskey. Um, it's one of those, again, that's very uh, unapologetic. You know, it's uh, I was going to say unforgiving, but, um, you know, it, 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 it'll be forgiving to a point, but it's unapologetic about what it is. It's yeah. bold and, um, you know, in your face and powerful and uh, and very uh, very proud of that. <laughs> and, and beautifully complex. I love how, by the way, that we are uh, in between these glasses here, as um, you've already kind of addressed, uh, we are yeah. not drinking out of glasses as we should be. And <laughs> we are about to do something awful. We're about to disrespect uh, God's gift to the scotch world, um, to the single malt world. We're about to disrespect it by drinking out of these coffee cups. Yeah. But we are furiously in the background, like trying to swell water. And just yeah, no, it, it, exactly. You know, yeah. Like the, like the, uh, you know, priest trying to get every little drop out of the communion cup, you know? Yeah. We're like, let's, let's get this joker clean. <laughs> Ready then. Oh, that's probably a little bit more than you wanted. Whoops. Oh, well, <laughs> feel free to throw, uh, throw any access into my, uh, or excess into my, my mug if you want. It's to. beautiful. And of course, like of all, and, you know, we always talk about uh, just the packaging of this kind of stuff, a beautiful uh, kind of brown green bottle. It's got the uh, Isla, uh, you know, 1816 there on the side, a kind of a parchment sticker on the front with a green uh, cap and um, a, a cork cap that's covered by kind of green aluminum with a red paper. It's just really, really pretty. So, um, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. I love it, man. Wonderfully complex. Like you, you, it's it takes you for a ride because it is so smooth when you first drink it, and then that peak kicks in on the back end, and it is phenomenal. I mean, for me, it is the quintessential Scotch to end all time. Yeah. I, I don't know. There, there's just something about, uh, like volume. You, you see why, um, someone like Ron Swanson would, uh, would appreciate it. I was just about to mention <laughs> that. So of course, uh, made very kind of, uh, more popularized by Ron Swanson, uh, the character from, um, I was about to say 30 Brock, but it was parks and recreation. Yep. Yep. And so it was, uh, his constant go-to, uh, uh, scotch whenever he was at a bar, <laughs> he would always order it, uh, neat. If I'm not mistaken, it's just so doggone good and I, yeah, I i i you know it let me just go ahead and leave all the snobby you know adjectives you know to the side like man every time i drink this stuff mm. it coats the inside of my mouth in a way that no other whiskey really does i i another whiskey which is a um you know near and dear to my heart is uh is talisker uh, oh yeah that's great another one. scotch it's you know got you know now that's this, a pete uh, like that's a pete house pete, right there pete bomb you know yeah. but it, it doesn't have that um and, and again one of my favorites but doesn't have that mouth coating um, that kind of uh, warmth that that the Lagavulin has for some reason, and I don't know why that is, but um, man, just a just a just a fantastic drink, man. I, I, you know, and and as, for as strong as it is, it's one of those that like you know every every sip um, goes down just really easy. I don't I don't know. I, gosh, I love this stuff. Mm, mm -hmm. Man, you know, um, I I do recall one of the most uh, uh, baller scenes from Parks and Rec is when uh, Ron Swanson like goes to a bar and he orders log woolen, but they didn't have it. So he like reaches into his pocket and like pulls out his own bottle <laughs> and like pays them to serve him his own drink. Right. You know right. I mean? Right. It's like, no, I'm drinking this. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's fantastic. Again, you know, it, it, I think here locally, this bottle uh, is going to retail for 75 or $80. I mean, people are like, man, that's expensive. Well, think, think about what goes into this, right? So this is made, uh, again, on a remote island in Northwest Scotland where, um, you know, sheep outnumber people, uh, probably five to one, uh, if not more. And, and, you know, this stuff has sat in the basement of this ancient building in, in this faraway land for 16 years, mm -hmm. you know, and, and even then they take so much care and, uh, you know, precious time, you know, making sure they get the distilling process correct even before that. And so, um, I was in college back. I mean, it, you know, lack of all, this is, this is an unapologetic luxury product, right? I mean, oh, you're, yeah. you're buying, you, this is not, you know, for most of us an everyday, uh, you know, scotch, right? They're, they're, they are they they do not apologize for making, you know, what, uh, many consider to be one of the best uh, in the world. And, so, and, um, and, and so let's treat it that way. So yeah. if you'll indulge me, just uh, uh, this, this kind of quick uh, story or tale, 
the so I, I have always since the first day that I uh, took the studio out of the house and opened yeah. the studio had a bottle of log woolen in my office and I've always kept it there for a special occasion. And it's either, it's either something, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like one of those things, like either something went really wrong or something went really right. Type <laughs> thing. But, um, I, in, in my first space, I had it there and I kept it there until, uh, we launched, um, a product with my other company satchel and we, we busted it open for, for that launch. And so, uh, and then kind of had it and pulled from it slowly over time. Cause you know, that's not something you want to like guzzle. No, not a bit. <laughs> um, and then as soon as it was gone, bought another one and kept it there for the longest time, uh, until we moved into this space right here. And when we moved into the space that we're currently in, it opened up a lot of opportunities for Pottery. We could start actually recording content for, uh, for clients outside of kind of the more, you know, direct relationship that you and I have, you know people come in and rent the studio like this was a rentable studio space yeah no that's right and i remember like the first customer i had like as soon as i got the the, the check in hand i busted open that bottle and i was like <laughs> you know because it was it was a big moment and uh and then since i kind of cleared that one out i've actually had this one right here and so it's probably been uh, in my office for a year or so well it, it, that's the thing though it is something that you know again for most of us we're not going to pull out every day but you know when we're ready to celebrate uh, you know something special or uh, mark something or or really reward ourselves for maybe a life moment or um or even if it's just a really hard week and we're like you know what th we're going to do something um you know maybe we shouldn't but but we're going to be really thankful we did <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. uh, man it's uh it, it's it's great well so, this one um, was my my cell in the studio yeah bottle, man so. i'm i'm, I'm glad I'm glad, uh, I'm glad. Thank you for busting it out today. It's so funny. Uh, uh, as I'm sitting here, you know, drinking this, I'm getting lost kind of in my own thoughts. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a great whiskey, but we do have a, uh, this, a is, fun... this is a task, man. You got to well, pair this with something good. It, it is. This it is, is, this is no, you know, uh, 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 Glenn Levitt or, uh, um, uh, what was the, the honey one, uh, till, till, uh, Tullamore Dew. Tullamore. This is no Tullamore Dew. Yeah. No, that's right. I mean, this, we, this you is know, a challenge. You know, right no, here. It, it is. I mean, you know, this is an incredibly complex whiskey, but, um, you know, still, um, it's still approachable in its own right. But, I mean, we're talking about incredibly, um, you know, uh, bold flavors that are um, distinctive. I mean, this is this thing made this thing majors in distinctives. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, how are we going to there's always, you know, I, I go back and forth when pairing tobaccos and, uh, and and alcohol whiskeys in particular. You know, we can we can go the you know direction where, um, you know, one uh, compliments the other in, in the way in, in that it doesn't get in the way of the other one. So we have a really uh, bold flavor in a whiskey. And so we're going to pair it with something maybe that doesn't um, overshadow that. Um, you know, it may be something more on the mild kind of uh, forgettable side so that you can enjoy the flavor of the whiskey rather than the flavor of the tobacco. Maybe we've got a, a whiskey that's so drinkable um, that it doesn't have a lot of, you know, character on its own. And so we want to, you know, pair it with the tobacco that uh, has, you know, very much its own, um, you know, distinctives and, and character and um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we, you know, are enjoying the experience more and maybe the, um, the whiskey itself is playing more of a secondary role to the tobacco, you know, with, with lag of all. And I, I feel like, you know, the 16, I, I feel like, um, both those routes are not particularly, um, you know, worthy. It's like, mm. man, we really need to, you know, find something that can kind of match the, uh, complexity and strength of this. And, um, so I don't know. I, I think I did okay on this one, but uh, we go back, of course, what do you pair with uh, one of the best uh, whiskeys in the world? Uh, you pair it with, uh, you know, something from one of the most, uh, you know, revered uh, modern tobacconists in the world. And of course, we go back to the, um, you know, pages and, uh, and you know, repertoire of, of our friend GL Peace. And, um, and today I've got a tobacco he debuted in 2003. Um, and this is a, this is a, personal tin of mine that dates to uh 2012 but this is uh this is GLP's classic collection Kensington um a great oh, okay. great Balkan yeah. style blend uh I'm going to read the back of the tin and uh just such a good tobacco it's got uh, uh just the right amount of flavor and and so we're kind of um we're kind of doubling down on the smokiness of the Lagavulin here we're kind of uh saying you know what we we believe in what they're doing we're going to um you know instead of just kind of um, getting out of the way, we're going to double down on it. And so uh, Kensington is a Balkan style blend with restraint. Uh, bright and red Virginia tobaccos are combined with richly flavored leaf from the Orient and Cyprian Latakia in a perfect measure for a wonderfully balanced smoke. Uh, this classic collection draws inspiration from the great tobaccos of days past. Uh, the blends offered 
are not meant as an attempt to replicate them, but to pay uh, them homage to capture some of their essence. And so um, anyway, he's got a whole great series of, uh, of tobaccos here. But um, the, the Kensington, it's just a just a delicious tobacco. It's got that uh, nice uh, mouth coating feel, which is uh, it's rich and it's malty. Uh, it's it's got a, a, a meaty flavor, which is really uh, incredibly pleasing, especially when you pair it with this uh, kind of mouth coating, uh, you know, syrupy, uh, viscous whiskey that that we've got in the Lagavulin. And so, um, man, just a just a really beautiful tobacco. The Latakia is very, um, you know, very pungent, but you know from the tin note itself that. Um, that it's going to be smooth just because of all the um, I- incredible richness that's there. So I, I'm, I'm going to let Bo kind of, uh, you know, it, it take a take a peek at this tin. And it, when you open that tin, Bo, I want you to pull it. Uh, when you open it, I want you to do it right next to your nose. Okay, okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, well, all right. Well, first then let me uh, take a look. So as you mentioned, the tin uh, does have kind of a... It's got like a simple parchment a type of feel to, to it. it, yeah. And it's not a it's not a bad thing at all. I think it actually um, uh, it's really nice. I mean, a lot of times you see these very glossy type of covers on uh, on uh, tin tobaccos. This doesn't have that. This is kind of that parchment feel, but the parchment actually makes it feel like it's something even more special. Of course, you do have that royal purple that's jumping out with the GLPs and the uh, sketch of the pipe and. Uh, what kind is of a, kind of a grayscale yeah. pencil sketch in the background? Yeah, and I was about to say a bar of soap, but obviously that's not a bar of soap. That's a, uh, <laughs> it's, and ironically, it's a picture of a tin, but a different shaped tin than the one that you're holding. That's right. <laughs> that's right. All right, let's see. No, no, Should no. I just go ahead and say raisins before wait, I pop, hey, pop it up? Look, no, just to get it out of the way. No, <laughs> no wait, th- wait, think about all the richness and incredible, uh, you know, boldness that we've mm. had just experienced in the whiskey. Now open your tin. Interesting. I don't think I've ever hit been hit with a tin note like that before. Interesting. There's like a like a spice, but also kind of a muskiness there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. There, it's impossible to say raisins with this. I really wanted to make that <laughs> joke, but like, like this, <laughs> this doesn't have that at all. It's so good, man. Gosh, Kensington's a beautiful tin. Of course, it comes in this kind of. Uh, you know, uh, Cornell and Deal's McClellan style tin that we all know of, you know, from these different brands. It says uh, the little paper top inside of it. The finest tobaccos are brought together in carefully, uh, in careful balance to provide a smoking experience like no other. It is my sincere wish that you will derive as much pleasure from the smoking of this mixture as I have from its creation. Mm. Uh, of course, that's from GLPs. And um, you open it up, just a rich, uh, malty uh, looking tobacco, a real uh, meatiness that's there. It's got, um, of course, that incredible um, uh, characteristic uh, tin note of the Latakia, but it, it does have a, a very accessible spice there from some of the Turkish and uh, and you know Virginias, which are rich in sugar. And uh, gosh, it's just a mm. it's just a it's just a delicious tobacco. And uh, you know, if it if an English blend or Balkan style blend is not something you even enjoy, uh, man, just just it's something about cracking a tin like that open and smelling it deeply. Um, and it's just something every pipe smoker should, uh, should experience. It's so different. Yeah. I mean, like it, it, it really, really is. it really, really is. And, and rich and, uh, and, and deep. It's just such a, uh, such a, such a great flavor to that tobacco. And I will say this, I mean, part, part of the reason, you know, I, I try not to comment too much on the condition of the tobacco when we pop it open. Cause I realize sometimes these are coming from your personal seller and they might've been sitting there for a little while. Generally they are. Yeah. This one in particular, I mean, I'll just mention, I don't know if we, it, it looks like this was very recently cracked yeah, open right here. that's right but i mean like you know this this when i open up like this kind of you know ribbon cut tobacco tin like this is the kind of consistency i want in terms of moisture yeah you know what i mean like yep. this is this is perfect to me so many uh tins de- you know fall short on that but i feel like what what they typically do at um not too dry not too wet yeah i i feel like what gl piece does is is provides just the right amount of moisture for all his tins and so um, you know, a lot of a lot of tobaccos don't come out that way. They really don't, particularly in a tin. But um, man, it's just a just the right amount of content. It reminds me very much of uh, some of those old, uh, you know, McClelland, um, you know, uh, the English English and Balkan blends that are just real rich and 
uh, you know, smokable straight from the tin and, and you don't even have to think about it, you know, golly, it's just, um, just a gorgeous tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> really, really pretty. I know we always do the, uh, the live commentary for the end of the show, but, but Russ did say, if I say raisins, he's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. It's impossible. Russ. I couldn't, <laughs> I wanted to, but I couldn't. <laughs> Kensington yeah. is so good, man. Fantastic yeah. And it's a uh, pairing. Well, I think they came out pretty good, but, um, yeah, two excellent, uh, two excellent tobaccos mixed paired with, uh, with two really great um great um spirits absolutely man yeah. well you know and the great thing is whenever we're talking squire select it is always kind of a, a chance to expand your palate both from a, a whiskey standpoint but also from a tobacco standpoint and as you're expanding your palate you want to make sure you're getting a good quality clean smoke that allows you to get all of those different flavor profiles so that you can describe them in the same way that john david cole does and not just say it tastes like raisins like <laughs> what we like to joke about from time to time uh so if you're going to do that you got to do it with a good quality pipe and of course i'm talking about the good quality corn cob pipe from our good friends at Missouri Meerschaum. Oh, that's exactly right, man. They've got such a great, uh, you know, assortment of pipes to pick from. And uh, one of the best ways to get started and to build your pipe collection quickly uh, is with the three pipe bag of smokable legend seconds from mm. Missouri Meerschaum. Uh, now, what a lot of folks, you know, don't realize is that, uh, you know, Missouri Meerschaum sells their better seconds, right? You Every uh, every brand has their own seconds. Now, uh, what what know, is a second? A second, it's... you know, these are pipes that maybe they had a, uh, you know, an aesthetic flaw, a, a visual flaw or some kind of little, uh, you know, chink in its armor that didn't quite let it make the cut for, um, you know, one of their mainline production pipes. And so what, what these big companies do is they'll mark the pipe and they'll sell it as a second, right? It's one that... Um, is perfectly smokable and it's got, uh, you know, good characteristics of its own, but it's not just, uh, it's just not the, you know, photo, you know, finish, uh, you know, pipe that you might see on the cover of the magazine. Well, you know, in Missouri Meerschaum, they've got tons of these pipes. And so what they do, uh, they pick out some of the better ones and they pack them in, you know, bags of smokable seconds. And the legend comes in a three pipe assortment, really, really uh, handy, a great way to, you know, beef up your rotation for a very inexpensive price. And uh, we're talking uh, retail 11 29 for three awesome Missouri Meerschaum pipes. Um, and just like that, overnight, you know, you can have uh, go from one pipe, or maybe just a couple uh, to a really nice assortment where you've got your pipe for your English style blends, your Virginias, your aromatics, uh, all right there in one fell swoop. And so um, it's just a really great, uh, great concept that they've done. And, uh, you know, they, they are taking the, the pipes that, um, you know, maybe wouldn't be on the, the, you know, front cover of the magazine and they're uh, making them available to you for a really uh, affordable price. So excellent pipes, an excellent company. Hey, if you got a Missouri Meerschaum pipe, be sure to smoke it this week. Take a picture of yourself doing so. Tweet it into us. We love to retweet that out to let the good folks at Missouri Meerschaum know that you appreciate them for sponsoring the show. All right, man. We've got a pipe question of the week this week. Now, this is kind of fun. A lot of times we get uh, pipe questions as it relates to, uh, you know, just kind of best practices, uh, occasionally some industry questions, uh, and then also, you know, just some different things that are going on in the market. This one's a little bit more cerebral, maybe yeah. even a little bit more personal. Yeah. yeah. This is coming from Pastor Joda, uh, or, or perhaps even Yoda, if it's a silent J. I, I don't know. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I, I'm going to assume it's Joda, but you know what assuming does. Let, it, let us know, Pastor. We'd love to know. <laughs> uh, he says, Bo and John David, thanks for the great podcast. I've been listening for a couple of years, but I've journeyed extensively through the backlog. CSR feels like I'm just sitting down with a couple of pals, enjoying some great conversation over a pipe. I apologize in advance if I ever meet you in public and start talking to you like we're old friends from my <laughs> side of the mic. It feels that way. Anyway, uh, anywho, uh, here's the point. I was looking at a picture of lush green forested mountains in Hawaii today and thought to myself, now there's a place I'd like to smoke my pipe. Then I realized I have a similar thought all the time. What are some of your places that you would say that now that's a place I'd like to smoke a pipe? Specifically, these are places that we have never been. Uh, let's go have a week. And again, that's from Pastor Joda Yoda. Man, great, great question. You know, every time uh, we, we all are exposed now that, well, a lot of us nowadays are exposed to social media and we see all these things kind of come through our feed and we're like, man, I'd like to go there. I'd like to see that. Um, man, every time I see all the different pipe smokers from the UK post pictures of them, you know, either gathering for their, um, you know, pipe 
conventions mm. or a local pipe meetup in London or uh, something like that. There is there's something extremely romantic to me about smoking a pipe uh, in the city of London itself that I've never you know I've never oh, wow. I've never done that. Yeah, and um, yeah, huh. I don't know. It, I, th- there's there's something about going to one of those really uh, old. Um, you know, incredibly historic smoke shops that are over there that uh, that still exist, <laughs> and uh, and and lighten up my pipe there with a bunch of uh, a bunch of dear brothers from um, you know from uh, from the island, you know, and I, I I'd really like to do that, you know. I think uh, a, a place I'd like to smoke a pipe is pick one of those old uh, historic tobacconists there uh, in London. Meet up with some other pipe smokers and uh, and and light my pipe and just kind of uh, experience life with them a little bit. Talk about tobacco, but also talk about life. Um, when I you know think of all the different things, the places I'd like to smoke my pipe. You know, I've done it at the beach, I've done it at the mountains. There's all the different places you've you've gone, but you know, it's also uh, you know that sense of place. Uh, I, I don't know. It uh, there's something about going to uh, to Great Britain and uh, and lighting up my pipe there. Um, in London. I'd like to do that one day. That's good, man. Yeah, I've never done that. All right. So I've been, um, I actually have fi- spoke about pipe in London and, uh, you know, it's a, it is a beautiful place. I remember when I was there for uh new media Europe, uh, that I was, I was telling somebody about how cool it was seeing all the, like the old de- decor and the new decor and yeah. like, all these buildings that have been here yeah. forever, but also these modern buildings. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, the Germans helped us out with uh, some remodeling a couple of decades ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, Oh yeah. Well, I didn't, well, that's one way to put it. I didn't think about that. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, for me, man, I, I, for as much as I love kind of maritime lore and, and fishing and that sort of thing, I have spent very little time actually on boats. Um, yeah, I think actually we, we went on a, um, you know, outside of like canoeing or kayaking or, or something of that nature, or, or even like, you know, like a, a small type boat, but on, on like a, like a legit, like fishing boat or something of that nature. Um, there's in my head, there is that kind of like sea captain kind of old grizzled smoke in that bent pipe and i actually have a pipe very specifically like in my collection for when i get a chance to enjoy it on like a legit boat like on, yeah. a, on a fishing charter fishing when, boat when that time comes it's there yeah or, or you know perhaps <laughs> maybe a yacht at some point although now that might have to change after our windshield pipe discussion like maybe i need yeah, to have a no. windshield for that yeah but uh but one way or the other <laughs> like that is that is that is a um that imagery has always stood out to me as something that I'd like to experience. And I just have not gotten a chance to do it. And part of it has been also kind of fear as well, because I have this pipe in my collection that I've saved for it. And this last past time I was on a charter fishing trip, uh, which was also one of the first times I've ever been on something like that. Um, I really wanted to do a good job and didn't want to, uh, was worried that I'd drop my pipe while I was like pulling in the in, fish nets. Into the drink. Yeah. yeah. Into the, yeah. <laughs> and so I wanted to kind of get proficient before I actually, you know, you gotta, you gotta figure it all out before you can really put it together. Well, that's so, okay. Yeah. Uh, but that's one, but it's, it's a great question. And, and, you know, it really speaks to, um, pastor, it really speaks to, you know, a series that we just kicked off very recently, which is part of our pipe culture places series. And, uh, you know, we actually uh, have uh, more of that to come here in the near future. You know, I probably should have actually mentioned at the top of the show, but we'll at the at the bottom of the show, at the end of the uh, show today, uh, we'll be sharing with you a a lineup of episodes we have coming that I think you're going to really enjoy. And one of those is a uh, a reopening of that kind of pipe culture places topic. And so uh, stay tuned a little bit later in the show for, for more information on that. Excellent question, Pastor. Hey, if you've got a pipe question for us, be sure to send it in. Show at CountrySquireRadio.com. Again, that's show at CountrySquireRadio.com. Quick fire questions, Jones! Ow! All right, man. Quick fire questions brought to us today, ladies and gentlemen, by Country Squire Radio t-shirts. Available now. What? Actually available now. We don't actually have one in the studio. No. I love this. That would, we be, that would be... <laughs> We were wait. This was going to be the. the oh, that would the be last that would thing. make way too much sense. <laughs> I, I was so proud of the fact that I've actually made them available for purchase. How can people find these don't, amazing? Don't t-shirts? don't ruin it by saying I didn't bring the T-shirt in. <laughs> uh, no, I mean that they, they are available uh, at uh, the countrysquireonline.com. And if you click on accessories, um, you can go and find um, uh, under um, CSR. Uh, look, look under accessories. Look under. Uh, look for CSR, and those T-shirts will pop up. I'll um, tell they're you what, really, man. We'll make it super easy. Uh, if you go to countrysquireradio.com, I'll put a direct link. Yeah, take he, you right Bo's, to Bo's going to put a link right now. Uh, but they're um, they're just really. Um, 
really attractive, and we were really excited about them. So we've got we've got a couple different options. Here. That is the ugliest man I've ever seen modeling them. Yeah, it, you know, it, our our dear friend uh, John Michael George. <laughs> What's up, John Michael? A, he, he's a missionary in Papua New Guinea. He was back for furlough. He's actually back now uh, in Papua New Guinea right now. But one thing I got him to do before he left was uh, was model uh, for our um, you know for our new T-shirts, which we're really thrilled about. Uh, we've got the Squire Scallywags T-shirt, which has a skull and instead of crossbones, it's got cross pipes, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and then we also have the uh, the uh, this is not a podcast. This is not a podcast shirt, which uh, is a is a play off of uh, the you know early 20th century painting, the treachery of images. Uh, this is not a pipe, and uh, you'll you'll be able to see and read more about that there. But uh, really thrilled about these. We thought they came out great. And uh, and have them in a variety of sizes. I, I think they're um, medium through three X, uh, and those are available just uh, you know for a limited time. So uh, check them out, man. Available there at the Country Squire online. Uh, great way to get some new uh, cool pipe gear. Uh, we think you'll like it, and a, a really awesome way to support the show as well. You know, it's it's great because you know a lot of times you see when these uh, these shirts, these kind of custom shirts, come out on the uh, the the market how um you know you'll 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 you can tell they've just like photoshopped an image onto an existing model <laughs> look at the dude that's not a model that's just some guy and he's it, really wearing the shirts no he is and that's how you know it and and and, and if you let's be honest if you're gonna photoshop you know this, this i love deal, you john michael i know you're listening brother. yeah i know right i know uh, you know, if you're going to Photoshop this particular individual, you would you would Photoshop a lot more than what it looks like we've done. Right? Yeah, I mean, there's, especially there's the, plenty face area. Of, yeah, the face <laughs> and the 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 scruffy beard, and you know, I mean, there's there's plenty of extra photoshopping that could have happened, right? Uh, <laughs> should we, have happened. It should, <laughs> per, perhaps. Uh, we love John Michael. Uh, man, we've uh, he's a dear friend, and uh, hopefully one day we'll be able to listen to this episode of us railing on him uh, there in the jungles of Papua New Guinea. But uh, anyway, beautiful shirts. We're really thrilled about them, and I uh, think you'll like them too. So uh, be sure to check those out at thecountrysquireonline.com. Uh, go to accessories and then look through there until you find those t-shirts and they're really uh really attractive we think you'll think you'll enjoy them yeah i'm pinning them the the link to the top of our uh our twitter account as well so uh yeah if you want to go to uh, twitter.com slash squire radio <laughs> we'll have links on uh country squire radio.com as well it's uh yeah you got to get these shirts y'all this is this is good oh, i'm so excited i was i was happy there. with how they came out absolutely I, was, yeah. I opened the box at the shop when they came in you know and uh, immediately three of them were gone. Like the, there were, you know, three guys sitting around when we opened the box. And, um, you know, before I even had the chance to put them on the website, uh, you know, they were immediately, immediately snatched up, uh, you know, one of each. And so um, anyway, enjoy. We All hope, right. Hope you like them. All right. So these uh, these quick fire questions are coming into us by Mario Davila. Uh, and it says, uh, I've been listening to many of your shows, but have you run across one? Uh, but yet to have. Uh, hmm. Let me try that again from yep. the top. All right, this one comes in, man, from Mario Davila. He says, uh, I've listened to many of your shows, but have yet to run across one dedicated to the popular topic of smoking your pipe in the bathtub. <laughs> the popular topic. The very popular topic. Uh, obviously. Yeah. Uh, right. I mean, yeah, that you know, every, everyone's got a thing. All right, so this is all yep. about in, in the tub. All right, enjoying your pipe in the yeah, tub. Yeah, in the tub. <laughs> you go get in the tub. All right, here we go. <laughs> do you prefer corn cobs or briars in the tub? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that every time. Every, in the tub. In the tub. Uh, I'm going to go with a corn cob because if you drop it in the tub, then, you, you know, you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Much. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think there's a, a really nice comfort level I would have in smoking my corn cob uh, in, in the tub. Uh, you know, of course, we've all <laughs> seen those iconic photos and always picture that that iconic imagery of smoking your pipe in the bathtub. Uh, you know, you've got like a like a, uh, you know, one of those hair net things. Yeah, on. Yeah. You know, there's, uh, there's bubbles everywhere, I guess. And, and you know, they always have kind of those like, you know, classic, like massive briar pipe type situations. And and it's like one of these things where where of course, for the photo shoot, they do that. But in reality, you know, it's a corn cob. You got to be corn cob. Uh, second, aromatic or English blend in the tub, in the tub. Uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna go with uh, aromatic. I, I, for some reason, you know, you've got all you're surrounded by these, uh, you know, incredible, you know, uh, eucalyptus, you know, French lavender, you know, body washes mm, and all this mm, kind of mm, stuff. Mm. It's like, well, let's don't let's don't you know clash with that. Let's just embrace it. And so, uh, yeah, I, I guess I'll go with aromatic. That's true, unless you happen to have one of those like body scrubs. It's like a coffee tobacco type of uh, yeah. Which smell the, to those it. are popular. Yeah, yeah. If you're going that route, then you go uh, English. But yeah. I'm I'm hearing you. I mean, like you know, we're, again, 
that classic iconic imagery of enjoying your pipe in the bathtub, which we all have experienced and, and uh, have all wanted to do and have all seen everywhere, really everywhere. It's it's prolific. You see it everywhere. Uh, and, you know, so you, you've got your essential oils you've poured in. You, you want to have an aromatic to go with it. I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, and then finally, soap on a rope or body wash gel in the tub, in the tub. Now remember, uh, you're smoking your pipe at the time. It, it, no, that's that's true. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, I guess I'll go with uh, with uh, with soap on a rope. Do yeah. you have you? All right, all I've right. never actually used soap on a rope. That, I feel I, like that, that, ex was, that exists. I feel but, like that was a thing in the '90s, but is that still a thing? I I don't know. I, I don't know where it came from, but I know. Well, no, soap on a rope that goes way back. Isn't really, that from like yeah, the uh, World War II or something. Well, but you know how things like things kind of like they're in and then they're out and then they're in and then they're out. Yeah, but I, I feel know. like in the '90s they were in again, and then like recently, I I maybe so. I don't know, but I, you know the, the something about you know being able to find your you're already fumbling with your pipe, right? You know, right. you're trying to keep that. You know, so what's what's going to be easier? Your body wash, which you've got to put maybe on a a uh, washcloth or a loofah or something. And then you've got, you know, your soap on a rope, which you can just kind of easily access. And, um, you know, um, that, I don't know. I guess I'll go with that. I, I, I frankly can't believe we're talking about any of this. Oh, well, but of course <laughs> this is the most, I mean, like, honestly, I'm, I'm, I kind of feel embarrassed for putting this in here when it really should be for pipe smoking places, because that is chief amongst the pipe smoking places is the tub. And if I was in the tub, <laughs> Smoking my pipe in the tub as, as only I wish I could be, uh, at this very moment. And as I have done several times, I mean, who has it? I visual images are just, that's, that's on you. Terrifying. I did not put those there. You yeah. did that. <laughs> uh, soap on a rope. Yeah. That for, for all the same reasons, John David gave, this is, this is, uh, this goes down in history. I think we've agreed on every single Squire select thing. Yeah. We've yeah. done that once or twice. That once or twice, but yeah. something about this one was special. Yeah. Uh <laughs> In the tub. <laughs> in the tub. <laughs> uh, all right, Mario. This is awesome. Thanks so much for these quick fire questions. Hey, if you got quick fire questions, be sure to send them in. Show at countrysquireradio.com. Again, that's show at countrysquireradio.com. All right, man. Uh, listener feedback. So we've got actually some, some great listener feedback, uh, but I think I'm actually going to jump to live feedback because we're running a little bit longer, as tends yeah. to happen sometimes once we've gotten into the, the Squire selects of it all. <laughs> uh, man, people have been uh, congratulating you heavily on the, uh, the live chat tonight, or today rather, uh, with uh, with the, the new edition of The Baby on the Way. Uh, we also have uh, Stephen Cardello. He says, man, all this talk of whiskey is making me want to cut out of work a tad early. Uh, Joe Gibson, Pappy Joe says, rye, rye, uh, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey. I cried. I'll drink the rye whiskey till the day I die. <laughs> uh, George Valkowski says, hi guys, just got here and uh, just figured out what's going on. Congratulations, John David. A baby is the best thing that will ever happen to you. Man, Amen to thank that. you. Thank you. Uh, Pipe Smoking Tom says, morning gents. Congrats to John David. Things will never be the same. I didn't see what's happening with Bo uh, about leaving Jackson. So I'm just assuming it's prison. <laughs> Yeah. Or Texas. Yeah, well, I mean, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Helms uh, says, uh, why did I expect a snake to pop out of the tin when you asked Bo to hold it close oh, to his Oh, man. Nose? Yeah. No, that would have been nice. That would have been funny. Like those little things of chewing gum where you pull it out and it snaps you on the on the fingernail. Yeah, that, yeah. that, uh, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> on uh, Twitter, we've got uh, our dear friend, Portland Paul, uh, at the Subcon. He says, I've always wanted to at least try that like of all, and I'm sure everything they make is incredible, and it uh, it truly is. Um, he also says, never forget, and then retweets the uh, picture of Bo saying, I prefer the tingle in the front. <laughs> um, and then we also have uh, Dave Allen. He says, uh, can't catch you today live. Um, get to see you on the replay. Good luck with the move, Bo York. I'm sure it'll be a smooth one. And, uh, man, I want to talk to you in the near future, you know, um, you know, once you get settled in over there uh, in Houston. Yeah, for, for those of y'all that aren't aware, um, you know, I think uh, someone had mentioned uh, about not really knowing what's going on with Bo, uh, uh, pipe smoking Tom. Um, you know, moving to Texas for uh, you know the new job opportunities out there. Uh, Country Squire Radio, obviously, the show is going on. We're we're not worried about that uh, at all. But it's going to be cool to see how uh, you get to interact with pipe smokers in that part of the world. Yeah, and man. I'm really seeing you know excited about once you get settled in over there, kind of your um, your um, you know kind of newbie view and and feelings of uh just one of the biggest cities in america and uh you know not just the pipe smoking scene but also the uh the culture scene and the food scene and the whiskey scene everything else you know i think it'll be a lot of fun to unpack that with you so um me having a kid right and you you moving it's just one more thing that our our dear friends get to walk with us uh walk with
with those. I'll tell you what, man. I mean, you know, somebody mentioned earlier, I think it was um, as part of the pipe question, uh, Pastor mentioned that, uh, you know, if, if we ever see him, you know, don't, don't be surprised if he starts acting like we're old friends or something like that. <laughs> but I mean, like, that's the reality of the medium is, is there is an intimate nature where you share yep. life with a lot of folks. And so, you know, with uh, everything that's that's transpired over the last several years uh we've been very open about it we're, we're we're open about you know our enjoyment of pipes but we're also open about our faith our families uh and what's going on yeah, in our life kind of our so, own experiences yeah yeah so uh yeah it's, even uh, even you know tub preferences well we yeah we got real <laughs> we, we got real on that one uh all right so uh here's the thing though you know as you mentioned the show is you know the show will go on and uh and, and has no signs of stopping there will be a little bit of difference for the next couple of weeks we won't have a live podcast. However, we will, of course, have the normal podcast. So for those of you that are just listening to the show, you will notice no difference. Um, but for uh, for those of you who just tune in on YouTube, might be a great opportunity to check out the podcast. Uh, you can do that at CountrySquireRadio.com. There are links to subscribe to the show. We'd love to have you. Um, you know, we always talk about the fact we're a podcast first. You know, if you've never listened to the actual podcast, you've just watched on YouTube, you got no idea. There's like this musical bumps. There's there's it's professionally <laughs> produced. It's like a, it's a thing. It's not just two guys talking on microphones. Like what what are we? us you know yeah. <laughs> um, faces for radio that's what we are exactly and so some of the <laughs> things you have come into country squire radio man we've got uh, we've got a 101 where we're going to be talking about cuts versus bowl size we've got a pop sh a pipe shop fails part four coming Ow! your way we've got an industry update uh episode dedication that we're looking forward to doing as i mentioned we're going to car carry on the pipe culture places series with man cave versus the study uh we're going to be doing a heroes of the bowl on Yo, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just about to say, hadn't done that in a while. Heroes of the Bowl. That's right, man. Here's the bowl, and this one, uh, this one's special. We're doing this on none other than J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, now we've done kind of Tolkien centric ones. Well, we've in the talked past. about about him quite a bit, obviously. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, with like the pipe uh, pipe tobacco, the Shire. That's part of our you know those first hundred episodes and that sort of thing. But there's a new biopic that's coming out here very soon, and it's a great opportunity to really do a deep dive into who the man was and the uh, the impact that that uh, he his legacy has had on the pipe tobacco industry, honestly but also what pipe tobacco has had on, as an impact on him and the works that he's created that have inspired millions. Uh, also, we've got a, a wonderful shape uh, style of pipe that we'll be doing, a top three, of course, Tobacco Talk, Spire Select. Basically, if you love Country Squire Radio, we're trying to make sure that we're cranking it up to 11 in the coming weeks as we go through this uh, this same kind of adjustment phase. So great excuse, once again, for those who have never checked out the podcast uh, to, to do so. And um, yeah, for those of you who are checking out the podcast, we've got some fun coming your way here very very soon yep all right man well uh yeah i think that's about does it uh it's it's uh look squire selects are always a blast <laughs> there's something about drinking at work and now in the middle yeah. of the day even no, that's right yeah <laughs> really it, it's uh it just kind of changes the dynamic and and we're grateful yeah oh yeah absolutely and, man. and spirited and very spirited and and yeah probably i'm gonna need to sit here for another few minutes <laughs> well hey you can help me pack no. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Find someone else. <laughs> no, man. All right. Well, uh, look, once again, thank y'all so much. We'll see y'all from the live show in a couple of weeks. We'll see the rest of you next week on the podcast. And uh, hey, man, let's go have a day. See you, brother. All right, guys. Y'all are awesome. Yeah, we had fun. It's good to see y'all. Y'all we'll, the best. Uh, yeah, be, be sure to, uh, you know, check out iTunes or whatever your preferred uh, podcast player is for the next few weeks. But we'll, uh, we'll see you back real soon. That's right. Thanks. Bye. Woo.